Today we're going to be making moonshine in space! You sent for me. Ah, yes, yes. Mm, now, we're brewing pochine, but we need to find a way to heat it without this bloody ship firing bloody lightning bolts at us. As you can probably guess, that clip had some small influence on my current fascination with this hobby. So what is pochin? Well, it really is just moonshine, but it's the Irish version of moonshine and it's centuries old. And pochin is produced pretty much in the same way as American moonshine. Really the biggest difference is the ingredients. Over here, moonshine was usually made with corn, malted corn specifically because it was cheap as hell. But over in Ireland, if you could afford the grain, it was usually malted barley and malted oats. So if you couldn't afford the grain, then it was gonna be anything that you had that was fermentable potatoes, turnips, treacle, sugar beets, really anything. For today's recipe, we're gonna go with the malted barley and the malted oats, mainly because I have never had anything with oats in it, and I wanna see what that contributes to the final product. So the way it used to be done, the malted barley and malted oats were dried over peat fires, and I'm not doing that, mainly because I have a problem with peat. And I blame Jesse from the Stillet channel for that because he gave me a sample of peated whiskey that he made that tasted a whole lot like toe jam. <laughs> it's like, oh, I kind of like what this is. Hey, hey! <laughs> What's happening here? Yeah. yeah. What did you just do to my mouth? <laughs> yeah, that's different. Somebody man. just farted in my mouth. <laughs> I can still taste it. So I'm skipping the peat and we're just going to use some store bought malted grain. But that's not traditional. Well, I'm not Irish, now am I? So I was actually gonna malt my own grain, but Ken, the owner of Barrel Charwood Products, <sighs> this company right here, actually is the one who wanted to know how to make pachin, so he sent me an email and offered to buy all the grain and the yeast. Not only that, he also supplied all the wood that we're gonna be using for the aging. Thanks, Ken. I've mentioned barrel char several times in the past because I've been using their products basically since I started in this hobby and I've always got fantastic results. From toasted cherry and mulberry to charred American white oak, Ken personally sources, mills, toasts, and chars all the wood himself. So you know you're not getting any kind of trash wood. This is all very closely inspected. He's got a wide selection of wood species and several different kits that are available on his website. And he's adding new products all the time. One of them is this toasted European chestnut that we're gonna be using today. And this spicy Brazilian Amberana wood that I am very excited to test. And we're also, of course, gonna be using some charred American white oak. So check out the link for barrel charwood down in the video description. This guy. So the original recipe that we're gonna be using, <laughs> I got it from a documentary that I watched. Um, and let's see, I'm gonna put a link for the documentary down in the video description too if you wanna check it out. So it's 16 stone or 224 pounds of malted barley and two stone or 28 pounds of malted oats. That's a bit more than I can handle. I don't work in those volumes. So we're gonna divide that by 20 and that's gonna give us 1.4 pounds of malted oats and 11.2 pounds of malted barley. I want a little bit higher gravity in my mash so I'm gonna round that up to two pounds of oats and 12 pounds of malted barley. So uh, let's go grind some grain. When you don't have really nice brewing equipment with a big uh, screen that you can park on top of the pot, this is <laughs> this is what I do. Mm. 
Ta-da! <laughs> it works. Definitely not ideal. All right, so now we're going to uh, heat up some water and then pour that over the grain to rinse the rest of the sugar off of the grains, giving them a little bit of a sparge to uh, extract as much of that uh, flavor and sugar as possible. And then we'll cool everything and uh, get it in the fermenter. All right, so before we get back into it, I just want to say a big thank you to all of you guys who have subscribed to my channel. I just hit a milestone. I just hit 50,000 subscribers, and I got to tell you, that feels awesome to, to know that there's that many nerds out there who appreciate the kind of weird stuff I get up to. I'm really, really happy to have all of you here, and uh, I just look forward to the channel keeping on growing. Thanks so much. So a weird idea popped into my head the day after I did the pachin mash. I wanted to make a small beer with my spent grain from the mash. Basically, you just remash your grain to get a weaker wort. And you can do that a couple of times. I did it twice. The first remashing, so the second mashing of that grain, gave me too high of a potential ABV to use as a small beer, because they're like between one and two percent. So I actually boiled that down for an hour and a half so that I could fit it into my pachin fermentation bucket and then added it in to give myself a little bit more volume. So I ended up with almost seven gallons at 8.1 percent ABV potentially. So that was the second remashing, but I'm also making a separate video for the third remashing to make the small beer and that should come out in a couple of weeks. So I'll go ahead and put that link for it right up here when it comes out. I have no idea how it's gonna turn out, but it should be interesting. All right, before we get back to the pachin, I just wanna thank my Patreon supporters for voting for me to ferment this off grain. I was kind of on the fence, do I wanna do it on grain or off grain? So I put it to a vote on my Patreon page and mercifully, everybody said, do it off grain. And I'm really glad I put it to a vote because I had enough trouble with it in the big kettle. So I really appreciate you guys helping me with stuff like this. Thank you so much, I couldn't do it without you, obviously. So if you wanna get in on decisions like that, you can check out the link for my Patreon page down in the video description. Okay, so the liquor fairy came and hypothetically distilled my wash down to low wines, or as it was traditionally called in Ireland, singlings and then hypothetically ran it through a spirit run and then they brought me all these jars for me to smell taste and ultimately blend so what did we get well the volume was a little low because we had a kind of a low gravity wash but there were some interesting flavors according to the liquor fairy um, there was a really strong honey character coming off the still the entire time they ran it so let's go through this stuff, find out what we've got left, then we'll blend it all together to get the, uh, the character that we want and we will age it. All right, so now's the fun part. We're gonna age this stuff on some delicious wood. The one thing I am so excited about today is this Ambarana wood. Ambarana is from Brazil and I can't even express to you how good this stuff smells. It's just wood, but it smells like cookies. It smells like gingerbread or graham crackers or snickerdoodles. Uh, well, really all of those. It smells like all of those together. It doesn't smell reminiscent of those things. It smells like that's what it is. Like I should be eating this because it's so strong. I am kind of tripping out about it. Each one of these will do enough for 750 milliliters. Um, I'm doing this in little mason jars, so that's about half. So I cut all my pieces down. This is so ridiculously amazing. Bloop. And this is charred American white oak. And then we've got some European chestnut. I got ahead of myself and I went ahead and dropped it in. This is after the wood was in there for about one minute. 
and <laughs> the the chestnut already started to color it. And then I remembered, oh yeah, I got to turn the camera on. So uh, that's going back in. So if you want to try some of that Amberana wood or the European chestnut and anything else that Ken has, barrel char wood products and check out his Etsy page, link down in the video description. Because this stuff is so special and I, I've never aged with it before, I'm just gonna do traditional long-term aging on this. So we'll try it, we'll give it a little sippy around Christmas time because it smells like Christmas cookies. So we'll see you then on that stuff. All right, so now that we've got these all aging on wood, we're gonna go ahead and do a little quick taste test with the white dog and see what we ended up with. Wow, that's really good. Remember how I said the liquor fairy told me that there was a, a honey character coming off of the still. On the aroma, I don't really pick that up. It's mostly, I smell the barley and uh, kind of a maltiness and a, a little bit of sweetness, but it's kind of nondescript. But when you taste this, can you see the legs on that coming down? Look at all that. Normally you don't see legs like that on a white spirit, but there's a, there's a, a really very soft, smooth mouthfeel. This is 53% and there's very little bite to it. It's quite nice. I think I put just enough tails in it so that there's a little bit on the nose. There's a little bit of that grain funk, but um, the overwhelming flavor is this kind of honey malt. That was just plain two row barley malt and malted oats that we used for the grain bill. There was no crystal malt or honey malt or anything like that, but I'm getting a very distinct flavor of honey. My hope on this Ambarana wood is that basically we end up getting liquid cookies. If I could have liquid alcoholic cookies, that's for me. <laughs> if you're wondering if you should try this uh, very simple malt bill, yeah, definitely. Now I have to try and leave these alone and not drink them all. So that is it for Pachin. If you learned anything, if you thought this was interesting, do me a favor, hit the like button because it really helps out the channel. If you have any questions or comments about this, go ahead and post them in the comment section down below. If you're not subscribed to the channel, click the button right over here and the little bell icon right next to it so you can get notified when I post new content. All right, thanks for watching. Talk at you later. Happy hypothetical distilling.